Welcome to this course on uh, transition metal organ metallics in catalysis and biology. In this uh, regard, we have been discussing olefin uh, oligomerization reactions in the past few lectures. And today, we are going to uh, finish up uh, the discussion on olefin oligomerization or alkene oligomerization. And if time permits, we uh, start uh, with uh, the topic alkene uh, olefin polymerization as well. So, uh, with that, uh, let me just give a brief overview of what we have been discussing uh, in the previous lectures. Uh, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier that we had started off uh, with uh, ethylene oligomerization uh, in the context of shop uh, process, cell higher olefin process. Uh, and then uh, we have looked into ethylene trimerization uh, using a tantalum catalyst. This was a work by Professor Ayushman Sen uh, where uh, one could produce one hexene selectively uh, by trimerizing ethylene. Uh, the third uh, that we had spoken about uh, in this uh, under this topic is this uh, propylene dimerization in terms of pro uh, uh, producing various kinds of branched hexanes. Uh, this also is a industrially applicable uh, 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 reaction which is used for uh, uh, application in auto industry particularly this branched hexane, hexanes when hydrogenated uh, are very good anti knocking agents uh, and are used in petrol uh, for their attributes. Uh, so, after uh, trimerization of uh, 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 propane, uh, uh, dimerization of propane uh, producing branched uh, uh, hexanes, we then looked at trimerization of uh, uh, butadiene uh, which uh, gives uh, this uh, cy cyclo dodeca uh, uh, triene uh, uh, which is a, a cyclic compound ring with three uh, olefinic, three unsaturated uh, olefinic bonds and each in a trans 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 uh, conf uh, configuration. And uh, subsequent to that uh, we have also uh, looked at the ziegler natter way of preparing this uh, 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 cyclododeca uh, uh, triene uh, using ziegler natter catalyst, titanium uh, catalyst. And today uh, uh, we are going to uh, discuss uh, butadiene dimerization. So, the one that we had uh, uh, spoken about earlier was butadiene trimerization and today uh, we are going to uh, talk about butadiene dimerization. Cyclo dimerization of uh, butadiene. Now, uh, in order to take up this topic, uh, uh, we should uh, refer to the earlier discussion of cyclotrimerization of butadiene. Uh, and this was reported by Wilke in 1960. Uh, now, uh, the, the difference uh, between these two process uh, is uh, that uh, uh, the earlier one was uh, 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 cyclotrimerization process uh, where uh, dodeca triene was uh, obtained and uh, this today what we are going to be discussing is a dimerization process uh, where is uh, we are going to uh, make uh, octadiene, uh, cyclic octadiene. So, there is a uh, the difference in the product which would be formed because of dimerization and obvious trimerization process. However, there is lot of similarity uh, uh, in the uh, process as well. For example, both involves a substrate butadiene. So, uh, the today's one is a dimerization of butadiene and uh, the earlier on we had discussed trimerization of butadiene. And furthermore, the other similarity is that the, uh, uh, the catalyst precursor is same for both. Uh, the catalyst precursor uh, uh, is same uh, for the both, uh, uh, the one which is uh, di uh, uh, dimerization and uh, the one uh, for the trimerization as well. And let me just uh, draw the catalyst precursor. So, this bis allyl nickel complex uh, is the catalyst uh, for cyclo uh, uh, dimerization process 
and also the same is true for for the nickel uh, uh, butadiene cyclotrimerization butadiene process. Now, uh, the difference lies uh, in the, uh, the final product, uh, one is for the dimerization, the other is the trimerization, whereas uh, the similarity is that both are of butadiene and both uh, it require the same catalyst. The only other difference is that this uh, butadiene dimerization proceeds in presence of phosphines. Uh, and uh, uh, they, uh, 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 they results in uh, dimerization. So, when phosphine is present uh, with nickel allyl catalyst and with butadiene uh, as a substrate, then primarily the dimerization product of the butadiene is observed. Whereas, when nickel allyl with butadiene is present exclusively, then the trimerized, uh, um, uh, uh, trimerized product observed. So, in this case when uh, phosphines are uh, present, uh, uh, then uh, the product distribution, the dimeric uh, product distribution can be controlled. by varying R or, or the alkyl group of the uh, phosphine. Uh, so, that uh, gives a useful handle on how this dimerization process uh, occurs. So, you know, now uh, let me uh, just uh, 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 give the scope of this reaction in terms of uh, the different products being formed. And this is shown over here. this reacting with 2 butadiene in presence of phosphine. Uh, we had observed similar reductive elimination. Uh, so, this over here nickel is in plus 2 oxygen state and reductive elimination of these two species occurs. occurs to give the diallyl compound compound as is shown over here and uh, uh, this is quite similar to what had been observed for during the cyclotrimerization of butadiene process where two uh, diallyl uh, allyl, uh, compound was evolved. But uh, please note that uh, this triallyl phosphine was not present uh, during that time and uh, resulting in this uh, product. P cell nickel product. This allyl nickel product uh, uh, again uh, the, uh, the oxygen state
oxygen state of the, uh, this uh, uh, has uh, uh, plus 2, but uh, like last time uh, this reaction sort of uh, can proceed as is shown over here, this uh, would go via the formation of this this nickel 0 and that in presence of PR3 uh, would give this nickel 2 compound uh, that would involve this uh, oxidative addition of these two to form uh, this uh, uh, ligand and then nickel becoming nickel 2. So, this process sort of is a two uh, uh, step process where a nickel 0 is formed followed uh, by that. Now, this once this is formed then that can uh, reductively eliminate to give cord cyclooctadiene polymer or these can st uh, be in equilibrium to give this compound. So, here the allyl moiety has just become a sigma donor and the other allyl moiety also has become a sigma donor as it is shown here. Now, this can again undergo reductive elimination to give this six membered compound cycloaxone compound as is shown over here. Similarly, this are the central species can also become this nickel metal cycle as is shown over here and that undergo reductive elimination to give an interesting compound cyclobutadiene uh, compound uh, of this type. So, what is seen over here uh, that uh, this dimerization of uh, butadiene, dimerization of butadiene as is shown over here uh, uh, can occur uh, to give the cyclooctadiene in presence of phosphine. However, in presence of uh, uh, the different substituents of phosphine, there can be a other products which can be also obtained from the reaction. Uh, uh, for example, if there is uh, this particular kind of two sigma allyl reagents are formed, sigma bonds to nickel are formed, then one six membered ring can be obtained. Whereas, uh, if this uh, 
uh, nickel cycle 5 membered ring is formed uh, then uh, cyclobutyl uh, cyclobutane with 2 uh, vinyl substituents are obtained. So, this is a nice uh, demonstration uh, again of the ability or scope of organometallic catalysis where uh, a variety of substrates can be obtained uh, depending on the sterics uh, that uh, one uh, uses. So, with this uh, now we come to this end uh, of our discussion on uh, cyclodimerization of butene and also uh, we conclude our discussion on uh, uh, alkene oligomerization and reaction. So, uh, to summarize uh, we have uh, looked into uh, uh, the variety of alkene oligomerization reactions starting with ethylene oligomerization uh, for in the context of shop catalysis. Second one is uh, ethylene tri uh, trimerization to obtain one hexene. Uh, third one uh, that we have looked at is propene dimerization. Uh, fourth one uh, uh, we had looked at uh, is cy cyclo uh, uh, trimerization of butadiene and uh, fifth one again uh, we had that we have looked at in this context is cyclo uh, dimerization of butadiene. So, we have looked at two reactions of butadiene dimerization and trimerization. We have looked at uh, one reaction of propene dimerization and we have looked at uh, two reactions uh, of ethylene trimerization and oligomerization. It is important to mention that in all of these cases the catalyst uh, which are used is nickel except for in uh, ethylene trimerization where tantalum was used for catalysis. So, this further uh, reinstates uh, nickel plates uh, as a metal of choice for producing uh, uh, oligomers of uh, different uh, degrees. Uh, cyclic and acyclic uh, from olefins. And that reason being that more uh, electron rich late transition metal are uh, good for al uh, alkene oligomerization whereas early transition metal are uh, good for electron deficient early transition metal are good for uh, olefin uh, polymerization. So, with this uh, uh, we move on to another uh, interesting topic which is olefin polymerization. So, now we are moving on from uh, low molecular weight oligomers of olefins to high molecular weight uh, 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 polymers of uh, uh, olefins. Uh, now, olefin polymerization is an important uh, reaction uh, uh, in terms of uh, producing uh, polyolefins and uh, it is uh, uh, it is sort of synonymous uh, with uh, um, uh, synonymous with ziegler natta catalysis. However, there is more to uh, olefin polymerization than just ziegler natta catalysis and different types of polymerizations uh, that are possible for uh, olefin and ziegler natta though constitute uh, a primary uh, uh, portion of it. So, uh, this is a, a application uh, which has seen the light of the day in terms of uh, the application uh, moving on from uh, the discovery in the uh, within the confines of laboratory to being practiced large scale in industry. So, polyolefins are, are uh, produced uh, industrially uh, for making uh, macromolecules. Poly olefins are strictly produced for making macromolecular materials. Now, the importance uh, um, uh, of these polyolefins uh, can be gauged by the uh, uh, extent of production uh, 
uh, that uh, uh, is required to meet the uh, daily uh, to meet the our uh, daily need or the need for these uh, plastics so the increased production of polyolefins over 70 megaton annually is mainly due to wide spread applications of polyolefins. So, uh, now this uh, is mainly a due to large scale applications of polyolefins. Polyolefins are uh, applied uh, uh, for various uh, 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 purposes and the demand for polyolefin uh, 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 is met by increasing the production and really a large amount about 70 uh, megaton of polyolefins are uh, being produced annually uh, to meet the uh, demand. So, uh, because of its large scale uh, application the, uh, uh, the knowledge about uh, structure property relationship uh, uh, and the development of uh, new catalyst uh, for polymerization is uh, important. The knowledge of structure property relationship is important for catalyst development. Now, this is a important uh, attribute because this is where uh, the mechanism uh, uh, the insights about the mechanism come into play because if one were uh, to know the mechanism fully well then one can uh, come up with uh, modifications which will enhance uh, uh, the catalytic attribute of this uh, 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 catalyst uh, performance uh, for this process and uh, produce improved uh, uh, polymers. So, uh, there is uh, the research uh, uh, primarily in this direction are focused in understanding the structure uh, property relationship or structure activity relationship as a function of catalyst uh, structure. Uh, and and uh, another thing uh, about uh, polyolefin is that not only uh, its uh, polymers are uh, important, uh, but also uh, the segmental mobility or degree of branching uh, is important with regard to determining what kind of polymer uh, material it would be, whether it would be a hard uh, uh, brittle kind of polymer or would it be a soft uh, ductile kind of polymer. So, the important term over here is segmental mobility depends. Mobility is an important property that depends on the degree of branching. of polymer. So, uh, 
what uh, we see uh, that uh, uh, polyolefin uh, uh, is a important uh, area overall. This is what uh, the take home message from here in the sense uh, uh, that this has uh, gone big and went on to be uh, become as one of the biggest industrial process for making uh, uh, large macromolecules. Huh. And then uh, the demand for polyolefins or polyolefinic materials are so high that uh, annually of about 7 uh, uh, T megaton that is a huge amount of polymers being produced. Uh, now uh, this widespread application of polymers in different, uh, mm, uh, 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 different applications uh, uh, for example from furnitures to bottles to other to devices uh, to utensils to everything. Uh, uh, that depends on the, uh, the nature of the polymers and uh, to understand that the mechanism uh, of the polymerization is very important and for obtaining insights on the mechanism uh, the structure property relationship uh, as a function of uh, uh, the catalyst uh, 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 structure is important for developing better catalyst which will produce more controlled and better uh, uh, polymers. Uh, and lastly, uh, uh, the segmental mobility uh, of the polymer is an important property that is dependent on the extent of the branching of the polymer uh, and uh, then the need comes uh, to make polymers which are branched and then exclusively make polymers which are non-branched or linear and uh, their overall property uh, would depend on the extent of branching or the linearity. For example, if a polymer uh, is branched, highly branched, then it will be more uh, uh, soft uh, uh, material whereas if the polymer is long chain uh, linear uh, polymer uh, then uh, uh, then uh, it will be a, a very brittle and hard. Huh. So depending on the application there is a need for producing each of these uh, types of uh, different uh, polymers. So with this uh, I come to an end of today's uh, discussion. Uh, um, on olefin oligomerization as well as olefin polymerization reactions. Uh, uh, to begin with we had uh, finished our discussion on the topic of olefin oligomerization uh, by uh, discussing uh, cyclodimerization of olefin using a nickel allyl catalyst. Uh, this is very similar, uh, the catalyst is very similar to that of uh, 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 the reaction cyclotrimerization of olefin. Uh, the only difference is that in the cyclodimerization of olefin, uh, phosphines are used and depending on the uh, types of phosphine used or the steric bulk of the phosphine, one can uh, not only produce uh, the cyclooctadiene uh, which is the cyclodimerized part of uh, uh, butadiene but also can uh, one can obtain uh, cyclo uh, a four membered cyclobutane or six membered cyclohexane uh, uh, rings uh, depending on the nature of the R group of the phosphine. Uh, we have looked into that and then we have looked into this important process of olefin uh, polymerization. We have looked into uh, the, the need for large scale production of this process and how they uh, are being met. Uh, by uh, uh, organometallic catalyst. Uh, we have also uh, noted the importance of the knowledge of structure property relationship in with respect to catalyst development. And lastly with respect to the uh, polymer properties we have uh, discussed about the importance of branching or segmental mobility of the polymer uh, which sort of uh, defines the uh, very nature of the polymer. So with this uh, I come to an end of today's discussion. We are going to be talking more on olefin polymerization particularly about various types of polymer uh, 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 and their attributes when we mix uh, uh, next uh, and uh, uh, then uh, look into uh, how or what are the various examples uh, and the types of polymers that are there uh, uh, for uh, this uh, uh, under this topic of olefin polymerization. So with this uh, I once again like to thank you for being with me in this class and I look forward uh, to be discussing this olefin polymerization in great uh, more detail when we meet next. Uh, uh, till then goodbye and thank you.